All right, a case this cool can only mean one thing. It's not a chainsaw. It's not a pew pew. It is a vintage made in the USA PV guitar. Let's see what we got this week. We have a PV Patriot in white. It's got one pickup, one knob. That's all you need. White strap. Uh, I got some strings and a note. Promo note, my brother. I appreciate while going over my vintage PV if you could redo the foam in the case. This PV has played many shows. It's pretty much just one of my collection pieces now. I don't take it out to gigs anymore. Thanks again, Kelly Boju. So Mr. Boju has kindly donated this over here for me to go through and for you people to see. And uh, the foam is basically falling apart on these. These cases are super rugged, but this foam degrades over 40 years or so. So I have some ideas on how to fix that on the cheap. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're also going to go through this guitar and uh, make sure it's playing right and clean. You can see all this fuzz and stuff all over the guitar from the foam breaking down. But we're going to fix all that, so stick around. I'm going to start by trying to just get all this old foam out. Some of these I can use as a template like that one there. Get this all out at once so I can use it as a template to trace. That's going to be futile. I got one piece to make a template out of anyway. Need to get all of this old crap out of here, so try some goo gone to start with. So uh, see how that works up here. I'll let it soak in a little bit too. Yeah, that's the trick. Some gooby gone and let it sit for a couple minutes. So I got this case as clean as I'm going to get it. In the end, it was the steel wool and the Goo Gone, which really took out the majority of the junk. 
uh, several passes by with my spray away glass cleaner to get any other residue out and then finally rubbing alcohol in the spots I'm going to be putting the foam back in because I want to make sure that uh, it sticks to that. Several different things you can do for foam. You can go back to the poly foam. They still make poly foam, of course. Uh, I'm never really a fan of it. I think it breaks down too quick and just leaves junk all over your guitar. Uh, some other things I was reading about, because PV had this problem back in the beginning when they first started making these cases, poly foam would degrade pretty quick. Uh, some people were using like a fuzzy material, like a teddy bear knit, things they make uh, stuffed animals out of, something plush that you can glue in there. Uh, I was reading other people took towels, cut them out, soft towels, and glued those in. Uh, I went to the craft store and I got this foam. And I got it in black. And I got three thick pieces and seven thinner, larger pieces. This is kind of the foam that they make the guitar pads out of, that you work on your guitar on. So... Uh, a thicker one's pretty soft. The thinner ones aren't, but if you triple them up, they get as thick as that, and uh, they're pretty soft. So I think that this type of foam would last a lot longer than the poly foam. Uh, I wish that I could have gotten larger sheets that were that thick, you know, and then I wouldn't have had to double these, double and triple these up, but, you know they didn't have them in stock I had to take what they had so these two I think are gonna cover the top and then I'll have one up here for the headstock and then six of these will make the bottom of that and then the seventh I can do the rim so I think that'll work uh, I'm gonna use some contact cement to put all these together and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that All right, there's my six sheets. Uh, I want to layer these with two big ones, one in the middle with the two strips on the end, and then two full ones on top of that. Kind of sandwich and stagger them. So I'll spray out some spray adhesive and start sticking them together. All right, that looks awesome. Cut out perfect. As you saw, I made a template out of some tin foil. Just crushed that in there. I think that was easier than trying to make a paper template out of a dished out area. So that worked pretty good for me. Got it close anyway. I had to do a little bit of trimming here and there to get it fit, but I think that's, uh, that's pretty reasonable. So I'm gonna cut this top one up here and then the back and I can start I guess it, putting it in. Okay, there's all my pieces cut. That bottom one, of course, I got the headstock. These three will go up here with these two over it, those go over the strings. 
And then I got my strips out of the thin material to go around the inside here. So same process, uh, spray on adhesive, put them in, hope for the best. I cut two of these for the where over where the strings go. I'm gonna put one in for now just to make sure that it's not too thick. That new lining came out awesome. I'm gonna let that sit up overnight, let the glue set up, but what an awesome case, huh? You know, one of PV's things was he wanted to give a case with every guitar because it added more value. And by shipping them in a case that was so sturdy, they saved them on shipping costs because they didn't have to box them and box them twice, you know? Um, just the design of it is awesome. I very rarely see these PV cases of this era that are broken. Um, the first era PVs for the T60s, they always ended up broken. They had metal hinges. But this being an all plastic blown piece is just super sturdy. And you figure this is a 1987 guitar, so this is, you know, 35, coming up on 40 years old. And uh, no sign of this plastic doing anything. You know, you get the little white area here, but very rare that I've seen even the clips break off so they gave you just some cool stuff too they gave you this hatch here to put all your accessories your mammy bar um, this spot here was for an amp you know a little practice amp that you can put in there and plug in um, you could ship these too uh, the two vintage PVs that I have the T15 and the T60 were both shipped to me just in case just the case closed and wrapped in packing tape up all around and that's all you needed and they came through perfectly I mean there's not even a scratch on this thing a little scuffing on the bottom where you lay it down but you know for its age and the amount of times that he's added out I don't think you can find a better case than what a PV makes um, if you know of a better case than what came with PVs then let me know because I'll fight you on it <laughs> so suck it All right, let's work through this thing. Clean the sucker up. Get rid of this strap to start with. Get my way. It's got these uh, the white coated strings on there. I've only ever used them on bass. I've never used them on a guitar. I took that back cover off because I know I'm going to have to get in there and do some tweaking once I get the new strings on to adjust that bridge. But just taking a peek here at his uh, backstage passes on uh, the back here. This one's pretty obvious. King Diamond, um, November 19th, 89 or 90, after show. This one says guest after show, but I can't tell what the picture is on there and that of course probably Davidson sticker it was like trying to herd cats I was going to forgo the fret checking uh, because every vintage PV 
made in the USA that I've ever worked on has never had a fret problem. They kind of set them there and that's where they are for life. But I figured I'd check it and uh, they're all perfect. So don't have to do anything there, but I do want to polish these frets. I think I'm going to start there before I start cleaning up too much. I am going to cover up the pickups though. With a pickup. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a quick polish on these. I got some really light steel wool. I have my guard. I'm not going to bother taping up because it's just going to be really quick. And uh, might follow it up with the Dremel and the, and the compound. But see how this looks. So PV started making guitars in the late 70s to compete with uh, Gibson and Fender. If you think about it, they were the only kind of company that was competing with Gibson and Fender at the time. There were a lot of guitar manufacturers and a lot of amp manufacturers, but not many that did both. I suppose Vox, but... And by the late 70s... I but he was really into getting Vox. They're more of a 60s feel to me. So PV started making uh, guitars in the late 70s to compete with Gibson and Fender. And they ran that T-Series. The first uh, guitar they made was the T-60. And they were stuck with that, and it's, it's brethren for about four or five years. 1983 was kind of a, a growth year for PV and guitars. They brought in a new designer, and they were going to try to compete with uh, more of what was going on on MTV, which was, you know, guitars, Japanese guitars, shredding, the heavy metal thing, I guess. The hair metal. They wanted to compete with all that. And the T models just weren't really doing it. So in 83, they started doing... They tried some different shapes. They did the Mystic, the Razor, and the Mantis. But then they also came out with more of a, a Strat-style guitar like you see here. Uh, you had the Milestone and the Horizon which were kind of more the upper scale. The Patriot was more on the affordable level, starter kit. But um, that year of 83 was when they started really trying to expand their guitar design. So the Patriot came out in 1983. If you look this up on uh, the interwebs, You'll find some conflicting information. Uh, the internet says 83 to 86 the Patriot was in production, but this one here is an 87, so. Really not a fan of blowing stuff all over my bench but I think I'm gonna to have to do it in this case. Uh, it's pretty crusty down here. I'm just gonna use the Sprayway glass cleaner. Clean this up, it's very non-abrasive. Base is rubbing alcohol. Like I was saying, 1983 was kind of a redesign year for PV. A uh, bunch of new models they had. 1984 saw them kind of try to separate them and break them up into uh, different classifications. For instance, the T-Series, which was kind of aging by this time, by 1984, um, they referred to as the Technology Series. 
So you had your technology series, which was the T60, the T15, which was a student model, uh, the T25, the T26, and the T27. And uh, that was what they considered their technology series. And it had those more big, rounder bodies. The contemporary series was the odd shapes that they were making. The Mystic, the Razor, and the Mantis. And then the Strat style, like you're seeing here, which was the Patriot, the Horizon, the Hydra, the Predator. Yep, there was a Predator. There was a Predator from 85 to 88, actually, before the PV Predator that you know. So the Strat style bodies was called the Impact Series, and this was to compete with Japanese guitars that were really coming over. You know, you started having uh, all your BC riches and and that type of stuff. You know, at the time, the Japanese luthiers were probably some of the best in the business. You'll look at some of the Aria stuff from the 70s, um, the BC riches, the early BC riches, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, the bigger names were now being manufactured in, in Japan. And, but PV wanted to keep this still here, you know, in the U.S. And that's what they did. It's starting to look better already. These new lines of these Strat style bodies for PV2 also introduced uh, Trem. That was something that they did not have on the T series. And PV was kind of always on the technology edge, trying to figure out, you know, different things they can put in guitars. Even, you know, even in the last 20 years, you know, they still tried to do that. You know, they had that self-tuning guitar. You know, it wasn't wasn't the best, but it was a design. It was trying. It was trying, you know. But, for instance, you know, they did a, a graphite nut back in the 80s. I don't think many people were doing graphite nuts, if anybody was doing graphite nuts. in the back I want to be a little more gentle I don't want to screw up any of these on them but I want to get it clean so I think I'm gonna do the spray up here and then I'll just spray my rag and kind of spot clean down there what you wouldn't want to do on somebody's stickers is use some type of a, a heavy-duty cleaner that's why I use this, the glass cleaner a lot um, especially the sprayway stuff. It's ammonia free, which is a huge positive. You don't want to be putting ammonia on wood products. Um, I just, I don't think that's good. I don't want to use anything abrasive down here. In fact, I don't even want to go over. Probably Davidson I'm not worried about, but these two, this is like almost a fabric sticker. So I want to make sure that uh, nothing goes off of that. The edge of this one's coming up. I'm going to see if I can get it down with some glue stick, something non-invasive. Non So I've taken some close-ups of these stickers. Um, that's obviously King Diamond. I don't know what this one is. Is it like Jane's Addiction or something? I'll post a picture, see if you can tell me what that one is. I'm sure dude knows, but I'd rather have you guys tell me. Now when you have a, uh, a maple neck that is clear coated like this. You don't need to use oil. It's only going to make a mess on you. 
because it's a sealed oil wants to soak into that rosewood but being a cleared maple neck like this just a good wipe down with some cleaner is all you need Let's finish this all up with some spray wax so it's difficult to try to find out what the end date for the Patriot was um, for instance this is an 87 if you look online all the Wikipedia's and all that kind of stuff say that the Patriot ended in 86 it ran from 83 to 86 and I you know I'm not even really sure it was out in 83 I think they came out in early early 84 maybe late 83 but now my PV book that I reference all things PV probably find this on the jungle shop PV guitars the authorized American history by Willie G Mosley he's got it kind of 84 to 86 um, this one is an 87 if you look up the serial number in any way it's an 87 and dude told me he bought it in 87 brand new so at music unlimited <laughs> if you know where that was or is would you ever get it? Music Unlimited. But then again, you know, I'm seeing some people on eBay reverb listing these things, Patriots from the 90s. But I don't know. I guess without looking at the serial number and figuring out what that was, are you going to figure out what year it is? I'm going to say 87. I can't see definitive proof of anything past that. Uh, if you search PV Patriot 1987, you get a lot of stuff. You search PV Patriot 1988, you really don't get much. And beyond that, it's just hearsay. <laughs> so dude provided some strings, boomers. Always love the boomers. Uh, these are 10s, 1046. We got them at Music Unlimited. Kind of cool. All right, setting up a PV Patriot is similar to a Fender Strat. Um, in fact, we even have Tiltomatic on these things right here. Uh, first thing I'm noticing, I'm going to be looking straight down at the neck right here, right down in there, and I can see it's got a forward pitch. Uh, you can see by the fret markers here that this last one is almost touching the body. This one's got about a sixteenth inch between the body and the thing. You kind of want it to be a little bit more pitched flat. So how you do that is we're going to loosen off a couple of these down here. Just a hair. And we take an Allen wrench. And I'm going to screw it in until it kind of looks where I, about where I want it. Alright, now I just brought it up. Bring all that dirt up with it. Just a hair more right there. I think I like it. And we'll lock it down. I would have changed my height down here, which is good because these are very low and they should be a little bit higher. So I got my neck angle figured out. Now I need to come down here and bring my bridge back up a little bit.
and I'm sighting down this way to make sure that I got a good crown here to go with the crown of the neck. So I really don't have to do any work to this. This is kind of set up right where I would put it. I actually might tighten it up a little bit. There isn't really much room to tighten it up. <laughs> These are kind of jacked all the way down. But. All right, I do believe that that is within perfect PV specifications. I think everything is where it should be. That neck is looking awesome. Yep, everything about it, it's got a perfect relief when you look down. You sight down the neck. It's not too flat, it's not too bowed. Really, really need to get this out of the case and out there, Boju. This doesn't deserve to be a case queen. <laughs> So I almost forgot to test the electronics in this and I'm glad I did because I found that the jack was really, really clippy. Um, when you moved around, it would go in and out. So I figured no problem. I have a bag of jacks and a ball here. So I could just change it out. So I opened it up and I found that it's one of these barrel jacks. So I ordered one of those and that came in. But this one is uh, for a stereo or a switch, uh, something like that. So it's got four lugs instead of the two that are in there. So um, you might be intimidated by something like that, not knowing which lug does what. But if you have a meter, you know, you put it to continuity, and we're gonna figure out which lug is which. So um, find the ground one first, and just put you know one of your probes there on the inside jacket and start testing around on these pins until it starts beeping and it's that one right there so I had already marked it with a little black marker so I know where that one is but now you gotta figure out the tip you know you gotta figure out where you know the tip goes in when you're putting in just the tip but as you see I can't get deep enough with that probe so I gotta figure something else out so I could you know butcher an old cable end and plug that in but you can just use a regular you know guitar lead and uh, what we'll do is we'll touch the tip to uh, there and we'll start probing leads here until we hit one that makes it beep and that's it and that's the shortest one in the center so when I read online the longest one was going to be my ground the shortest one was going to be my tip and that is true so now I know that and uh, I can get to work soldering this in now these are kind of a pain in the butt because you got to send them in you know one way they're going to cut some new wire to do that
All right, now I'm going to put some heat shrink on these extra lugs that aren't used, just to be completely anal about it. This one looks, plays, and feels a thousand times better. So I hope I gave you some great ideas on refoaming your guitar case. Uh, like I said, the foam I'm into for about 10 bucks. The spray adhesive I had here, but even if you have to buy that, you're into it for less than 20 bucks. And this is probably going to last another 40 years, in an hour of my time, to fix it. So that wasn't too bad at all. So I'm going to get this back to the man, and I'm going to insist that he start playing this one out, because it deserves it. So Boju, the next IS-30 show you have, I want to see this thing out there getting played. <laughs> Does not deserve to be a case queen. And if somebody can go on the internet and fix the fact that the Patriot was made until 87, not 86, it was actually technically, I want to say 84 to 87, because it didn't come out until the January 84 price list. So... If somebody can fix that, that'd be much appreciated, but I'm not the guy to do that. <laughs> so I want to thank you for watching. 
Give me a thumbs up for filming it for you. And we'll talk again soon. I swear every little speck of dust. <laughs>